This one for you, obviously you've worked with Chris Nolan before, so was it him that drew you into it or was it the, the, the script, the Dunkirk, the story? Well, it, it's always Chris first because, you, you know, he'll give you a call and say, look, I've got this thing and he'll just sort of discuss it with you and then the script comes after that and then, but you know, if it's Chris, you know, chances are it's going to be extraordinary, so you're kind of in, really. I mean, assume this was very different to the other projects you work with them. First of all, you're on a boat for, for a lot of it. What was, yeah. the, what was the, is it different every time you work with him? Or well, I mean, you know, his, his process and his sort of approach to it and his philosophy behind filmmaking remains constant. But I think in this one, he was really pushing the envelope in terms of challenging himself and challenging the actors and challenging his crew and ultimately challenging the audience, you know, to make something really, really visceral and something really, really immersive. So I could see uh, that effort to really push himself. Yeah, and when we find your character in the film, I mean, first he's he's in shock, I and mean, obviously he's been at war, but for you, how much research did you do into that side of what a soldier might go through? Yeah, I mean, that was the prime, that was my real job. You know, Chris said, look, I'm gonna, here it is, we have the character, we know what we need to do, and now I need you to go away and kind of, sort of, you know, do the research on your own and bring it back to me, what you, how you think you should play it, and, and then we'll discuss it and sort of, decide sort of how to modulate the performance in terms of how we react to, to different situations and how we, react, how we react to different characters. And um, But what was lovely was that in the script, you know, you get to see him beforehand uh, completely in control and completely capable and completely, you know, uh, functioning. And then afterwards, we see him after some unnamed tragedy and he's reduced to this. And so that was lovely for me because it's one of the few characters that has a before and it's the only character that has a before and after yeah. in the story. And is it nice to have that respect from a director like that? That feels like such a collaboration rather than this is a story stick. Do you know what I mean? You got to go off and kind of go back and say, these are my ideas. Is it nice to have that with a director that you know so well at this point, I assume? Ah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a real privilege to work with him every time. Um, I mean, there's no argument that he's like one of the greatest directors around at the moment. I think everyone accepts that. So as an actor, selfishly, you want to work with the best people and, and he's definitely one of those. And But every 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 relationship between a director and a, an actor should be collaborative. I mean, it, you know, they're the boss and they're the leader, and, um, but, you know, it has to be an exchange of ideas always. Okay, and you work a lot with Barry Keown, obviously, here today um, in the movie. What was he like to work with? I mean, this guy's had a buzz about him at the moment, doesn't he? Yeah, deservedly so. I mean, uh, he's just got it, you know, and you can't teach that stuff, you know. He's just got it, and he's kind of electrifying on screen, and uh, I, yeah, I think all the films he's got coming out and everything, and he's just a he's just a darling young fellow as well, you know, which is which is good. Okay, when you were filming, a lot of this is real. There's like no CGI in this, so the spitfires are going overhead, you know, all this stuff. I assume that helped with staying in character, and is, is that something that's brilliant? I assume you don't get that in many movies that you work No, on. although, no, you're right, and it does help tremendously, but I haven't done much sort of screen screen acting just because of the nature of the projects that I choose, but but yeah, it does. I think it helps the actor, and ultimately, it, 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 it the audience feels it. I think when they watch it, the audience feels like that there's no cut there. Yeah. And those planes are definitely real because the truth is, we all can recognize a CGI shot now because we we watch so much of it. We all know when something isn't real. We just even if it's the best digital effects in the world, you just know, and that sort of subconsciously will will kind of disconnect you from the experience. I think. Okay, and when you finally saw when you've seen, you've seen the movie, I assume. Was it, is it as tense for you? Because there's so much going on in this film, and there's so much outside of your scenes, like other yeah. story. Is it as tense for you and an experience, do you think, as it is for me or anybody else who goes uh, to see I mean, it? I hope so. I, I, you know, I, I, I watched the film. It felt like I was watching with my breath held for the whole thing, and uh, it's an incredibly suspenseful, uh, tense experience. Yeah. It's something, it's a film to be, exp to be experienced, really. Okay, well, listen, good luck with everything. I know you've got to be shaken also. You could talk to you all day, but good luck with it all, and um, congratulations on Dunkirk. Cool. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. FM 104. Dublin's hit music station.